Good afternoon. We're here for the January 20th, 2022 nuisance abatement hearing at 3 p.m. Property of Jason Deary, case number 2021-002. Ms. Kaler, would you take the roll, please? Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Wen? Trustee oh, Wen, please. That's how old this is. Trusting music. Thank you. All right, Ms. Kaler, floor is yours. Okay. Um, thanks for everybody coming out for this meeting. Um, if there's anyone here that would like to testify at this hearing today, I need you to repeat after me. Uh, you want to unmute Mike? Like, no, 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 he's muted so he can't talk. He can hear. If he's okay. Going to test okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you guys want to stand, that want us. Yeah, oh, one second, Karen. Okay. All right, Miss Ramsey's on mute. Go ahead. Okay. Do you sincerely declare and affirm that the testimony you're about to give before the trustees will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer under the penalty of perjury if so answer i do i do i do awesome thank you um i have a statement that i will read um this is a nuisance abatement hearing summary on october 21st 2021 the first nuisance abatement hearing was held with the Perry Township trustees and Mr. Jason Derry. Um, there's a question of the address that Jason Derry says was assigned to his property. Um, I received a phone call yesterday from uh, Larry Wiseman who assigns addresses. And he did confirm that he did give him that address, but it was only, um, it would only be good once permits were pulled and there hasn't been any permits pulled. Um, I, I called and had talked to Larry a while back and he said he didn't assign it, but apparently he did find something that says that he did but it's not legit because the permits are not pulled. Um, I also called the Brookville Post Office to see if their address, that address was in their system and they said it was not. The second thing was Mike Ramsey's driveway. The Perry Township's trustees told Jason Derry not to use Mike's driveway and to put in his own driveway within 60 days. As of 1-4-2022 and as of this morning, that had not been done. The 60 days were up December 20th of 2021. The removal of vehicles and campers off the property. The personal vehicle and shipping containers can stay for now is what the trustees had said in the last meeting. Um, as of 1-4-2022, and that's when I wrote this, nothing had been moved. Um, since that time, I think it was on January the 8th of this year, the camper was taken out. Um, the other thing that was on the list was to start the barn permit process within 60 days. Um, on 11-16-2021, Ms. Jerry dropped off the zoning application for a permit for the shipping container, not the barn. Um, the rest of this is basically what was said in the last meeting is failure to do the above within 60 days after receipt from the hearing date of 10-21-2021 will result in the following. The township shall provide a removal and abate the nuisance. The property owner shall be billed 
the actual cost of the abatement plus the five percent. And if the property owner does not pay said cost, the township cost will be placed on the property, tax duplicate, and a lien may be placed on the property from the date on entry. That's all I have, Jason. So at this time, we have found that the majority of the requirements to move forward have not been met by December 20th, 2021, or even by today. I want to speak. It's all done. Driveway's in, everything's moved, my container, all my personal stuff's outside the container. You guys gave me 90 days at the beginning and they cut it down to 60. Mm -hmm. It's just me. I did everything I could. I spent, I had three or four, I got, I had three people come out there, try to move the vehicles, the property retained water. So it was hard with the weather and everything. Had a tow truck out there. He almost got stuck. So I had to rent, I rented a Bobcat today. Spent, I spent $3,000 on everything, moving the camper, getting everything done, putting the driveway in. Every, the only thing I didn't do was the permit for the barn because they said leach lines and septic and I'm not putting all that in. So that's why, that's the only, that's the only thing that I didn't do. You're telling me there's no cars out there right now? My personal stuff. It's my stuff, my personal stuff. Everything else that was on there before, the per the camper's gone, everything, everything else there is my personal, my stuff that I have titles to. That's my personal effects. And uh, <clears throat> I was gonna do a privacy fence, but I ran out of money. I'm gonna put a privacy fence up on the, the front of the, the cars and then down the side. So Nobody see it. All you see was the shipping container and then the privacy fence. I just cleaned all the brush out of everything that was the back on Mr. Ramsey, whatever. I took the uh, bobcat and knocked all that down, cleaned it up, cleaned all the trash up, whatever. It wasn't really trash. It was just the vehicles. So you get a permit from the county for your driveway. Yes, I sent that to Joe. I sent. I, I melt. I had to cop him off, fill it out, and then mail it to him. And I was waiting, so I emailed her yesterday. I had a lady help me, like, I, I'm not a secretary, but she went in to help me put the stuff in the thing so I could email it to them and stuff. So it's all, and I got proof of everything. You didn't get a copy of it? The drive? I didn't get nothing back. I had to mail them the first. Because one, you had to write, yeah, you had to actually write it out and stuff. So I, I, I copied both of them and mailed them in. I didn't hear nothing. So I emailed her, yes, you know, emailed everything back to her again yesterday to make sure she had everything. So you put the driveway in with no permit? Uh, the, the gentleman said that it was fine because I already talked to him. Oh. The gentleman you gave me the, the number to that I had to talk to you at the beginning. He's like, go ahead and put the driveway in and the paperwork will follow. That so would have been... Going, the, the uh, I put the <clears throat> culverts in. Only thing I do is I bring some gravel in. I, I'm waiting on... I think that was the Department of Engineers. I talked to Larry about the address stuff. He said he did. Give me the address, but I didn't know it was because you had to do the permit stuff. That's the only thing, permit for the barn. That's the only thing I didn't get done. And it was you gave me 60 days at the holidays. I had, you know, I had to spend money for the holidays. You know, it was really a time crunch. That's why I asked for the 90 days, and I did it in the 90 days, technically, that you gave me the originally, and then you cut it back to 60, and that was right before Christmas and all the holidays. So Okay, so what we have here says the personal vehicle, singular, and the shipping container can stay for now. That says vehicles. What does that say? My yeah. personal vehicles, that's all I got. And like I said before, I don't have anywhere. The old one? This is today. This didn't copy the whole thing. Huh? It's on here. <clears throat> So the junk vehicles have been removed. 
Yeah. Everything, like I said before, everything moves on its, you know, it, it, it can be moved. But it's all my personal stuff that's going to go in my shop when I build my shop. Right, understand. So how many vehicles? So the, but I can prove, you know, title, I can get whatever, right. you know. So how many vehicles are on the property right now? My bug, my GTX, and my truck. And my jet, the Jaguar is going, going. I just pulled it up out of the way and keep it all going. Like I said, it was from my other shop. I just got the title for it because it was a, a customer's car they left. I just got the title processed and, and it's what's technically my car. Like I said, the tow truck couldn't get out there because he, he gets stuck. He moved two vehicles. I don't know, Mike can probably verify the other day. He moved all that stuff today. He put it in his driveway. And I did use Mike's lane to get in and out. Permission from Mr. Ramsey to use it. I don't have any contact information, so. That was one of no, the this is, I don't know if you guys are using parliamentary procedures or what, but uh, I trust Mike Koss. So if, uh, if he says he gave him permission to cut in off that corner to get that stuff out, that's fine. He didn't talk to me at all about my client. Okay. I don't have I, I don't have him, I told him six months ago to put his own driveway in when he bought or six years ago when he bought the place and never did until the day he put in a pipe and a and a dirt cover over it. So in that regard, that, that falls outside of the purview of this board, but there could be some action, I'm guessing, from his neighbors to him. Now, whose driveway is it? Is the partial? Is that is that lane? Who whose is it? That belongs to is Mike Ramsey's property, according to the plot map. Yeah, the plot, yeah, that's the only thing I do. I just come right into my property. I didn't run it up. I tried to fix. You know, that's I'm just. There's no way. There's a ditch to get. I can't jump a ditch to get in my property. Right. You know, I did everything I could. I, I'm respectful, and everybody else just wants to keep pointing the finger. You know, and there's you go up and down this situation. There's a there's a pirate ship in somebody's yard over here across the street there's a condemned barn that is a nuisance pirate right? ships in trotwood we can't do anything I'm just saying, I just that's been torn years. down or that's in back. trotwood <laughs> but, you know, i'm just saying it's there's a barn right across the street that has fallen in that is a nuisance it's condemned and he's and, he's getting waters saying, too i've done everything it's just me i don't i'm not from here and i don't know you guys last time none of that is, is subject to this hearing right so, that, that doesn't have that's that's what I was problem. stating is basically that's not something that we can speak towards. That's out of our purview. Um, the vehicles, we need, I guess, confirmation. And you confirm that those vehicles are gone, sir? What? You confirm that those vehicles are no longer on the property? They're on the property. There's a truck there. There's a car there. There's two trailers with junk there, a container there. And he, it was all back where I could see it. Now he's got it on the other side of the the big container where I can't see it, but it's still. Right. I drove by there this morning and they were there and he has moved them on this side of the shipping container away from Mike's. Like I said, it's my personal property. I'm trying to put up a privacy fence so nobody see it. That's my stuff. Yeah, there's another uh, Volkswagen there too. Yeah, that's yeah. my car, my two trailers with my- So if the, if the vehicles that are on the property, you can show the titles for those. All my stuff. Those fall within the constraints of what the personal vehicles that we said could temporarily stay, right? The camper's gone, the junk vehicles are gone, correct? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna put tarps over the, it's my compressors for my shop. So one trailer has two compressors, I'm gonna put a tarp over it so it looks better. I, and like I said, here in a week, I'm gonna put a privacy fence up. Is, is the vehicles uh, registered? I mean, are they, do they have stickers and plates on them? Not the older they run? The, rest the restoration. It's the, the bug and the GTX are, are my personal projects and stuff. The truck has been tagged and the Jag, like I said, I just get in the process of getting the title. For the so the company. only thing that's got tags on it is? Is my truck, my big F-250. <laughs> I'm sure. Right. Let's get them insured. Oh, because they're 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 my people. They're just we're sitting. I'm not using them. My truck. It's it's my rig truck. So I'm not welding. So oh, I need to go pull something. And the other two are my personal. They're my project vehicles. That's why they were in my shop. And when I when I had my other shop, they were inside. Everything was inside. Now when I lost my four thousand square foot shop, 
brought everything over and I don't have a shop yet built over here and everybody wants to complain. You know, I'm doing everything I can. Nobody, this whole time, no, like I said, no, none of these guys asked to help me, asked, hey, it's bothering me. Hey, it's, it looks like shit. No, nothing. I'm trying to do everything I can to get this all freaking cleaned up and make it look good so you guys leave me alone so I could, you know, be, be up to speed with everything. What is your plan for gravel in the driveway? What's your timeline? Just whenever I can get the money to get it and have somebody come in. Because it's a driveway right now. I, I don't even, you know, I don't have to go out there. I can park, I can, Mr. Troy across the street, I'll, use, I'll, I'll park in his drive. I'll talk to him when I'm over here putting private spins up on my property until I get gravel. So you can't use what you put in today? It's too wet right now. That's why it was, it was really wet and it snowed, got cold, and it was falling. It's, so you just put dirt over this culvert? If we just, yeah, that's all I can do right now. It's the first step until it gets till it starts drying out, and I can bring gravel. Did, did you have dirt delivered? What's that? Did you have dirt delivered? No, just the, from the the drive and everything. There's a pretty good ditch, so it's I dug it out, put the culvert in, and then covered it back up. So it's a slope, and that's the first step until I can get gravel in there. I spent a lot of money trying to appease, you know, do everything I can. I just I couldn't do it in the 60 days with Christmas, the holidays, all this, you know, plus working full time and have my kids. So I did the best I could with what I did. I like to hear from other people, and then I think we need to call Montgomery County and Jim. I think that might be what yeah. Karen stepped out to do. Home. I think that's what Karen stepped up okay. to. If you want to go check with her and see if that's what she was doing. Hey guys, is the floor still open for comment? Let's wait for uh, Trusty Mears to get back before we. Yeah, we're just waiting for Trusty Mears and Miss Taylor okay. to return. That's fine.
Did I hear you getting that? I don't think I did. Oh, yeah. Um, this is They're closed, so we have to call Karen tomorrow. Oh, they're closed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we will follow up with the county on the status of that permit for the driveway. Okay. The the definition we were provided was the Ohio Revised Code Section 505.173, Storage of Junk Motor Vehicles. And it defines a junk motor vehicle means a motor vehicle that meets all of the following criteria. Three model years, older, older, apparently inoperable, and extensively damaged, including but not limited to any of the following, missing wheels, tires, engine, or transmission. It goes on to state that Whoever violates any resolution adoption under the section is guilty of a minor misdemeanor. We say that a violation of the section continues to persist. To, to, to add on onto the, the storage of vehicles. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think we need to know that the zoning uh, requirements of putting up a privacy fence without a dwelling. Um, I'm not sure that there's- uh, we, we don't have any zoning we're not fencing. There's fencing. Okay. No, no, yeah, that's why I put it, stack it nice, and that's why I was gonna put the fence up. Okay, just making sure. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm scanning this to see where the, Do we have any resolutions on the book regarding the storage of junk motor vehicles? I'm sorry. Do we have any resolutions on the books regarding storage of junk vehicles? I'm, I'm going through what you gave me. Yeah, there, this is the ORC and the only resolution that I have pulled right now, I'd have to go and look, is the 11, well, what is it, 11 stash. <laughs> Um, you have it in your packet, I think, the 11 dash, the resolution. It's 11 dash 72. And this was what actually was sent out, Jason. I have a copy of that, but that's what was sent out. This is what. Right. So when we were talking about this, the definition of a personal vehicle versus, we didn't mention a junk vehicle, but basically anything that was titled. Right. I mean, is there a personal vehicle? I thought from the last meeting, there was only a few of those that were personal. Right. And he was agreed right. that he was going to uh, move them. Yeah. So. So according to SORC, 
Section B, in addition to other remedies provided by law, the Board of Township Trustees may institute an action for injunction, mandamus, or abatement, or any other appropriate action or proceeding to prohibit the storage of junk motor vehicles in violation of this section. And then the discerns between a junk vehicle and a collector's vehicle. So basically, if a car is three years or older, inoperable, and extensively damaged, including but not limited to any of the following missing wheels, tires, engine, transmission, that's considered a junk vehicle. did not review this prior to the, to, we didn't go over this at the last hearing. No, that's because I just found it in right. the last couple of weeks because I'm dealing with more vehicles just sitting around in properties. Right. That's the reason I found it. There's a Volkswagen that's on your property. A Volkswagen? Yeah, it's got a motor in it and everything. It's just, it was trying, I was restoring it and everything. All the, just the glasses out and the tears out. One of the only one that doesn't have a motor is the GTX. That's my drag car. And that's a project car. That's my 67 GTX. And then my Ford F-250. That's the only three that's going to be out there. The Jag, like I said, wasn't mine last meeting. Went through the process to get the title and everything. Get rid of it. I just moved it so it all be all in one area so nobody could claim that it's still sitting in the back of the property. So I moved it all the way up. And like you said, I, there's no, nothing about a privacy fence, so I'm going to put a privacy fence up. How many, tra how many trailers? Two trailers. And they've all got wheels and tires on? Mm -hmm. Everything's movable. I moved everything today. Are they licensed? No, because they're, they're yeah. project cars. And the trailers? I'm oh, sorry? The trailers licensed? Oh, yeah, they were. Just I haven't used them. But they're for my other. Uh, one of the trailers has a plate. I just have to see the stickers up and everything. So reviewing the nuisance abatement hearing summary from the first hearing, as to number one, regarding the question of the address, the, the county has stated that that address is not official until permits are pulled. The property is that correct, Ms. Taylor? Correct. Okay. So the address right now is not official until that happens. I did pull the permit for the container, so. I don't know what I haven't done anything with that because I have to wait to I know, but I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, pulled, I did with you know the permit. I just the other one is my fault because all the leach lines and I'm not putting the septic, so that's why I didn't know that 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 is affiliated with with the address. But I didn't do that permit for the container, and that, that right. And that I do have that, but what was asked for you by the trustees was to at least start the application. And that wasn't done. That's how it was worded to start the application for the barn. So you take more money and file the, 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 the paper I brought with me. So that's all it I is. I don't, first of all, what, okay, let me explain something. When somebody files for a permit, I don't care what it is, yep. there's a fee. Yep, I, whatever that good. fee is. 99% of the time, they'll write me a check, which is fantastic. That check stays in that file yeah, but we talked about until that I hand that person that permit. Yeah. That check does not get cashed until that permit is presented. But the lady before you, I done pulled the permit and paid it and everything, and she didn't do nothing. And we done talked that it, the permit's already been paid for the, for the I, storage container. And as far, so as, as, far as your storage so container, that is true. There's a $20 bill okay. in that file. Thank you. And then since I did that, that's a permit for, for my property to have a container on that address. No, 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 no. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm no. I don't know. What let I'm, me, let me explain. Permit, so that, I don't know okay. Why the address isn't good. Just because, just, no, you have not received a permit. The only thing you've yes. done, you have turned in an application. Yeah, I turned it out. Yeah, and then nothing was filed. And 
you had given Kate a $20 bill, which she wrote you a receipt for because I found it. it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But I have not issued you that permit. Okay. So the permit has not been really, you don't have a permit. But how are you going to hold that against me for 60 days when that's supposed to be your job? I, I didn't know. You, you said to do it and I did it. Now, you know, the only thing I got to do is fill out this permit. But and start this. So that's what I'm saying. I, you you had I had to get a permit. Okay. Get the address. If 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 you really want to go there, okay. Here we I, go. I, I, no. I don't know all the, all but, the okay. rules. Okay. Let me That's explain. Let me explain. That shipping container is considered a storage container. Okay. According to zoning, that shipping container legally. First of all, should have had a permit before it was even moved onto the property. Yep. Number two, it's only good for seven days. You can only have that shipping container or that storage container for seven days, twice a year. But it's considered a mobile container, like these, these little drop-off. That's what Kate told me. It's a mobile. Well, it's not permanent. But I'm not Kate. <laughs> I'm just saying what, I, what, what, what I've been through, I'm trying to get this... I know, but I, I, I just want been, I just want to make you understand. Yes, I did the permit because you up. turned that in. Address. Doesn't mean you got a permit. I know. I understand that. I'm just saying. The the per, my understanding from the county is is that a permit has to be pulled to build construct a building on the property. That's for, that is how, that is when the permit is pulled, which would activate the address. Right. So, and see until yeah, I thought that. That's what, when I did that. No, you did this that. is what I want to explain. When you get a permit, it's actually technically a permit certificate from me to build a barn, build a house, put up a shed. I don't care what it is. Yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the permit. All that does is I have a checklist. I go out there. Okay, this is done. This is done. This is done. This is done. Okay, we can issue a permit certificate. I come back. I do the permit certificate. I call the person, have them come and pick it up. And then I tell them this, this certificate is what Montgomery County has to have in order for them to issue you a building permit. That's where that gets pulled. Right. And that's how this cycle works. Yeah. So that, that certificate from me tells Montgomery County You've done everything out here that yes, you're supposed the, to do. For the, this part of it, for the building, right? <clears throat> there they started. For the what now? Because the permit the that you did, no, the permit that you got was just for the storage unit. Had nothing but he didn't even get a permit. All he did was fill out the application. But he's saying since he got, since he yeah. did, he thinks he did that. He's saying but, that he, he thinks that he should go ahead and build No. It. No, no, the, the container, you said to do the start the process. So the, last the, time I was here. The only the only certificate that the county wants is that to build a new building. Yes. Any other permit, and, and this is this is the county's policy. We provide the certificate to show that, like Ms. Kaler said, that you've met the steps required from Perry Township's perspective. We don't issue the permit. The certificate is sent to the county, the county then reviews it. Reviews probably the site survey and a few other things. How they get everything. And then they're the ones that issue the permit. And they're going to want to know is there going to be electric on that building? Because then you have to get a permit for that. I've already been in contact with the engineer. So there's a whole stuff. I've already got all that. Follow up. I've already got all that for the pole barn. I was just, you said to do that for the container because it's been there. I can't move it. You know, it's it's full of stuff. It's got, you know, building materials, everything in it, you know. And that's why I'm trying to figure out what. Like when I build the pole barn, it's going to be moved and it's going to be in the building. It's going to be part of the building. Well, the other part of that puzzle that the, uh, according to the zoning text, when it comes to the storage unit or the shipping container or whatever, it says it has to be inside yes. a building that's and do. you don't have a building yet to put it in. I, that, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm doing everything I possibly can. It's because it's going to be, it's like this. I'm going to move it. And it's going to be in the back of the building and it's going to be enclosed. You'll never see it ever again. So, so another point of clarification is, is that we didn't say that the shipping container had to be permitted because no, I just, only for se two, seven days. Right. I mean, that's what the year is. So we actually caveated that initially and said that for now, 
as part of the due diligence going forward, you showing that you're making the effort to get stuff done, that we weren't even focused on the permit for the shipping container. So. Right, there's a zoning on it. Right. So right there, the, the permit for the shipping containers out the window because we weren't holding you to that. I just because we we understand one that you had building materials in there too that once you get a permit for that after seven days or fourteen days if they're concurrent right mm -hmm. it has to go it has to be off the property so we we weren't holding you to that I just, initially I but I did as part of the process for the address since I did since I filed the, the permit they know that's my address and he's going to start processing uh, Larry whatever to because that's the last time I when I talked to him last time I got the address I didn't know it had to be a permitted like building structure. You have to have I a building want, structure on there I to get the address. An address and, you know, for this, this parcel. And Ms. Kaler did set with you after the hearing mm -hmm. and walk through the steps of what needed to be done from our perspective to get that certificate so that the county could then issue their, their permit. And yeah, I just, I had questions stuff. That's the only thing. I don't, I'm not putting in a, a leech line. I'm not doing any, it's just going to be a pole barn right now. I'm not doing any work so, to it. So I have not personally, I can only speak for myself. I have not seen the permit checklist or the certificate checklist for a for a pole barn. I can get and show it to you. Well, that's what I'm trying to get to is yeah. we told him he had to start the process. Mm -hmm. What's the process look like? So okay. we can see it's, if any only five things. Made or not. Right. Only five things. Right. Let me go grab it. You have to put him in the driveway, get the address, and he's not then. Well, because the permit has to be in to get the address. He requested the address. Yes. They gave him a, a tentative address that's yes. not active until the building right. is permitted. So while he did request it, he hasn't obtained the address until the permit's filed for the pole barn. What did the neighbor say? Uh, Mr. Ramsey, did you have anything that you wanted to say? I know you spoke up a little bit earlier when Trustee Mears stepped out. Okay. This is the instruction sheet. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the pole barn, it's these five things. Okay. Okay. This is one from Montgomery County. Right. All right, go ahead, Mr. Ramsey. Sorry, right, Mr. Ramsey. That's okay. Um, as, as, as far as this property and the, and, the, and the issues surrounding it, I don't, I've got skin in the game, but it's not the same as the people who are Im immediately adjacent to him. I don't live there. I just farm the land. I own the land and farm the land and have a driveway. And the only thing I ever asked was that it not be used, you know, to, as his own personal driveway, which is what he did for the last few years. Um, what I'm going to do as soon as the ground thaws out, I haven't been by there in a couple days Two days ago, there was nothing moved except for that camper. Uh, I haven't been by there today. I don't go down there every day um, unless it's to check crops or something. But as soon as the ground thaws out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put two big six-inch pipes in the ground and on each, each side of the drive and put a chain across it. I mean, I've sat and I've been patient and and waited and he hasn't done anything yet. You know, being a farmer, I do have some equipment. You know, I got a backhoe, I got a bobcat and all that stuff. But even all that aside, I don't even need to own those things to cut in a driveway. And to, somebody that says it's gonna cost them $3,000 maybe to cut in an entire length of a driveway, but just to put in some 
tile or culvert pipe and, and gravel it, it's not anywhere near that much money. I've done it on several farms. I've done it on my brother's farm, this $3, farm, other places. Was, I've was everything I spent to move the camper and everything. That's not for the driveway, so. Hell, I could do it for $500. That's what I'm saying. I, had, I just got it done. I, 3000 is what I spent on everything so far to get all this, move the camper and do everything. Tow trucks to come out and move, try to move stuff. That I'm, so basically today, what you, all you've done is just move things from here to there. My personal stuff that you said can stay. Everything else I got, I did everything else that you guys asked. Okay, me. let's go back. It says you can stay for now. That's what I'm saying. You guys it can change that. And what the hell is going on? Like, that's I don't know everything. I just it's my property. I I understand. I was pissed off. I cleaned it up. I want to put a privacy fence so nobody's going to see it. You guys said there's no permit for that. The so, vehicles are mine. It's my personal stuff. It's my shop. It's my personal stuff. Understand. So Damn. have you have you completed the application form for the township permit? Okay. Now what for? No, it's for the it's for the pool barn. Right for the pool barn. Supposed to get built. So there was an application for because I'm not putting okay. in any plumbing. I'm not doing any water. It's a, it's a pool barn, so that's why I got the permit right here. So right, and you, for, for, you got the, the application or what? Right. whatever you get the application, right? Yeah. and everything else is done. Do you have a plot plan drawn to scale showing the location of all buildings? Which there's nothing on there other than this. But, you, but it would show where the proposed building was going to be, right? Yeah, yeah, I can lay that out. Can... So do you, do you have a that that plot plan? So no, I, I... what would happen with that plot plan? The only thing that, I mean, he's not, technically, he's not going to have a plot plan because there's nothing there. There's nothing there, right. Plan. But when that plot plan would come into play is if he decided that he wanted to, um, put up house or something, then he has to have all that, you know, because he'll have to do that before he can put up a house. Well, anyway. That's not required for this because there was nothing there. Right. I mean, because there's that nothing one. there, but open land. Structure must be 10 feet away from all property lines. Okay. Front of new structure can be no closer to the roadway than the rear wall of the residence with no residence. It has to abide by the easement. Wherever, yeah. So he's going to have to keep in mind wherever he puts that barn. So much where everybody, it's got to be here. back. It has to where be back. Is where the barn's going to be. Right. Where, where I have everything stored right now. So are you planning on building a home there? Yeah. Okay. So you got to keep that in mind because the yeah, barn has to go bad. behind yeah. the house. The, the two story house is beside me is going to probably be like Mike's house. It's going to be in the same. Same road. Same so as in the uh, same the area. Okay. The back road where, where the container is. Okay. Where everything is. And where you was mowing, and it looks like where that strip of land is where Mike Ramsey's lane is, you still have to be 10 feet off of that property, off of that lane. They just paved that road. From they his had to, they had the markers out there in the in the road from the pool. I'm like from the telephone pole there, I'm like five, three feet. <laughs> Last okay. time I checked, from there, I know exactly. I can. Okay, but it has to be ten feet off the map. No, no, no. This side. Uh, on the other side. Yeah, don't want to pull this. Side. <coughs> here. My house is here. You're no. on the other side of the pole. Yeah, yeah. That's where I was thinking. There, if you go straight down, he's got a drain in the corner. That's the property line. There, the the the, the farm drain right there, the little black boulder. Well, you're gonna have to get a. There's a supposed to be what some steel stakes in the ground or something. They cover like the, the road. All those paints. Was some up there on the and, or, uh, Is that what they're called? I just, no. But I just want him to understand that he has to stay off my Ramsey. Yeah, I mean, basically on that, no, no, if he has that. the. Where he draws, and then yeah, he needs to order. potentially yeah. put the barn. It's like three feet. All right. <laughs> well, this is where the house right. is. I need to ask for order for one second. Ms. Keller, go ahead. Okay. In order for this to, I think, be resolved, what you need to do, because it is an open piece of ground, yep. okay, you need to take a piece of paper, and you need to put, okay, this right here is where I'm going to put the barn. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll yeah, I'll draw that. That's what and I'm then <laughs> what you want to do is you also want to put on there. Okay, and this is where I'm going to put future home. 
Yeah, it's going to be okay. Because you're not going to have a leach field. You're not going to have the septic. You're not going to have any of that until you're ready to build a home. Okay. So you have to keep in mind when you're preparing to do this, you have to have the room to put that stuff in. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a 40 by 60 shop. Yeah, I've already planted. It's all got plenty of room. But I, I'm talking about the leach field, the septic, and all that for. Yeah. And when you put that barn up, are you running electric right then? Yes, I've already talked to DPNL and got the engineer. I I got put up a temporary box, and then gonna put so you're going to need to make sure that you have permits for that. Uh, yeah, I've already been in contact. I got okay. panels and all that. That's any permit. Are you? You're saying you have them, but I don't. Well, I mean, like I've been in contact. They we started okay. the process. There's nothing. But before you ship that stuff off to anybody, you need to have a copy. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. so that I can have a copy here. So if Montgomery County or anybody comes back to me and go, well, there's electric on that barn, you know, I got to be able to say, yeah, we're aware, right? Here's the letter stating that he's, you know, he has a permit for that. Okay, I thought, about, I thought that was the DPNL it, stuff, but I still need to just give a copy of everything so it's all this, covered. Yeah. To, to save yourself a lot of headache, you need a copy of everything. Yeah, I've already got all that. It's got to be. He's and I need copies brought into this office yeah. of yeah. everything. Yeah, I, got I can get on there and get copies. So the only two things on the list of five that Perry Township requires, one is the application needs to be completed. Yeah, I've got that. Okay. But that wasn't done by 1220. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second thing is building prints drawn to scale. Do you have building prints drawn to scale for that pole barn? Yeah, you have to have whatever barn that's going to up. It's going to be yeah, it's, it's a pre it's a it's a kit okay. so there's engineering drawings. And you that's what we need. Like you know. Build a freaking barn. It's I know you got to have the engineer. You got to have the, yeah that I have to have. That's what they're talking about there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a package. Yeah, pole barn standard pole barn. So make sure you get copies of those. Just, yeah, with all the paperwork. So how soon are you planning on putting the barn up? I'm just hoping for the spring. That's I'm doing everything. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I'm doing my best. It's just me. Have, have you seen what the county requires for their permit? No, I just I was just given. Okay. The, He's going to be hard pressed to get this by the spring. Yeah, that, that's all I'm going to say is that this is this is quite uh, detailed as to what they require to move forward. This is this is for, what the county wants. For They're just crap. a pole barn, no, yep. no, just electrical, no. See, yeah. look, for a pole barn. I'm not the only okay. one that wants a site plan. They do. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, I, that's they why I didn't do nothing because I didn't. I don't okay. have anything for the. I'm not building the barn yet. That's why. Okay. I want to get the other thing is if and when. I issue you a permit for the certificate permit for the barn. For the okay. Barn. Yeah. That per that certificate is only good for a year. As we told, yeah, last time. Yeah. So I want to make sure you you realize that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. So the second I get you that permit, you need to jump on this because. So this is a first. No, no. I'm first. Yeah, but the process. They're second. I, I still got to do. Your permit and their permit. The the only two Third things step, yeah. that we require because there's nothing on the property. That's what we we're just going over. Yeah. One, the application form has to be completed, and two, the building prints drawn to scale. So if you have the engineering drawings for that, and Miss Kaler says that those are sufficient <coughs> for the pole barn. Yeah. Because we just need the building prints, right? So the engineering drawing is good, and the completed form. Those are the only two things that you have to do for us to start the process of getting your permit. Yeah, to, to make it make you guys happy. That's and the other thing that you have to do is you have to mark out in your field. Stake it to where it's- Stake it because I'm coming out to inspect it before I give issue the permit because I do that with everybody. The best I can because some, that stuff is where the barn <laughs> I'll stake it out the best I can with and where the driveway is gonna meet. It's just pretty much where the driveway is, the pole barn's gonna be right there. Straight in the back of the property. Okay, well, then you you can draw that also on a piece of paper. I have all the the surveyor prints here at home in my files that lay out all the properties around there. When Mrs. Burkhart 
and her husband before he died started selling off those plots. That's why there's some houses along there. And that's why all that land sitting behind there, you know, that belongs to me, they plotted it off so there'd always be, you know, an entrance or a right away into it. So I've got all those prints with the location of all the surveyor pins and here in Ohio, uh, Derry, they're called surveyor pins and they're uh -huh. driven pretty deep in the ground. So it's not like something you can go out and just dig up and find. Right, right. Uh, you need a metal detector. So I have the county surveyor prints for all those. If anybody ever needs them, I got a copy of them right here. And the other thing that I, that I wanted to say before I didn't get to quite finish was about who had skin in the game on this is, you know, the, the driveway just needs to be mutually respected. You know, that's it. But the people who live on either side of him also have maybe more so skin in the game. You know, and, and putting a, a privacy fence of a, of, up around it, that doesn't solve the problem. All that does is out of sight, out of mind. So, yeah, that's in your court. Let's see what you do with it. That's all I had. What about the other neighbors? They haven't answered a couple questions for me. One is the shipping container size story. It was only good for seven days at a time. Well, it's been six years now since mm -hmm. that So what, are we going to revisit that <clears throat> issue another seven days or something twice a year? Or we just, <clears throat> we just, a lot, just so, that slide. So initially at the first hearing that we had, we can't go backwards. We started from there, right? We talked about that at length. Um, the key is, is that at that time, we weren't going to push on the shipping container because it does have building materials in it. We understand. That's why we didn't want to even talk about permitting that because once we permit that, then it has to go after 14 days, right? So by actually doing that, if Ms. Kaler would have filed the permit, your shipping container would have had to be gone. Right. right? So, so what we were trying to do is we were trying to deal with this in a way that shows progress, right? We, we knew that we couldn't do everything in a day. We couldn't do everything in 60 days, but we wanted to see progress within those 60 days. We did not see progress within those 60 days, right? There's been progress in the last day or so. The last week, yeah. Right, last week. Um, and looking at the list of what was provided to Mr. Deary, there was only two things that were truly required. The application, which Ms. Kaler's here five days a week, Monday through Friday. She has an email address. She's very easily contactable. Mm -hmm. We bugged the hell out of her. Okay. So being able to fill out that application, you could have contacted her anytime to do so. And you didn't. All right. The second thing is the building prints to scale. If that's included in the pole barn, then all you had to do is bring that copy up here and let Ms. Kaler make a copy and put it on file. Those are the only two things at the initial hearing that was required to show progress and move forward. Oh, I was just trying to get all the, the vehicles moving and stuff. That Understand. Was, I was complaining about. No, nobody, nobody said anything about that. So, so, I so I'm, I'm, I'm getting to that part, okay? Because there was two separate issues. One was showing progress towards the barn permit. The other one is to remove the junk vehicles and allow the personal vehicles to persist at that time, right? As Ms. Kaler said, they're not going to be allowed to stay there forever. There's going to have to be stuff done. Understand that. Um, we didn't get into a level of detail as to what de defines a personal vehicle, but the state has defined what is a junk vehicle. My understanding is the junk vehicles have been removed. The only one that may be a junk vehicle would be the Jaguar? Blue car, yeah, the blue car. Yeah. I'm with so how many cars are sitting on that property right now? With the with the blue car. Four. The Jag. When I went through there this morning, there were six. I got the two trailer. I got the container. I got the Volkswagen, the bug, the GTX, my black truck. That's all three of mine. And then the two trailers are right here. And I just pulled the Jag up because it was in the back. I just and there's nothing on the trailers anymore. I'm sorry. There's nothing on the trailers. Oh yeah, that's my 
my part, my content, my stuff in my shop. But the okay. car there's no vehicles on the trailers. My Nova, it's just the shell. It's just a, it's just a shell. It's been on there for years. That's my high school car. That's, you know, it was in my shop on the trailer, and that's when, I, when the people they expanded their business, and I left the shop. To answer your question, as far as like the shipping containers, one of the things that my goal is for, I'm hoping this year, is to uh, get with the board of commission and we need to revise some of these issues. Number one, I, and this is just me, I can't make the decision, it's up to the Board of Commission, but I can tell them what I think, I think, I can. But if, and the shipping containers are popping up all over the, the township, and if people are going to use them technically like a, a barn, a storage, or a shed, or you can label it whatever you want, the fine, Oh, that's what or the fee needs to be at least a hundred dollars. That's what a pool barn is, because and that's what they're using it for. A shed is a hundred dollars. If it's bigger than a ten by ten, you got to have a permit, and it's a hundred dollar fee. So that's one of the things that I'm going to try to get the board of commissions to change the, the verbiage in the. Um, yeah. text about shipping containers they're if they're going to be sitting on properties like this one's been on there for six years and his isn't the only one in the township then it need to be it needs to be uh, described as a a portable barn or whatever you want to call it and the fee needs to be more and it needs to be treated as a a barn and it still needs to go back behind the house right so, but that is one of the things that I'm going to be working on. So the one thing that I heard is that, that what's on the trailer is only a shell and a shell does not constitute a motor vehicle, which means it can't be considered a junk vehicle. It is a piece of metal that's sitting on a trailer. It's got nothing up underneath it. It's just a shell. So, right. So well, the, if, if, if the title, if the VIN number is attached to it, it is considered a car. And the VIN is associated with the frame, not the shell necessarily. Shell. I mean, is it the shell? Where's the VIN? You have a title it's for that car? car? So it's on the it's on the dash. The trunk would be on the frame. You know, it's it'll be on the dash as well. I'm sorry. It'll be on the dash as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most sometimes you, the, the truck frames, yeah. Do so you, you have a title for the car on the trailer? My Nova? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it's my high school car. It's yeah. It's considered a vehicle. Right. <clears throat> And that's the part that we had to get in, that it's not. But it's not, but they're not running vehicles. Right. Okay. And, and yeah. I don't care, be, be quiet, because I'm trying to get this shit set on you guys. Are complaining. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, I'm, gentlemen, please. I'm about ready to leave. And don't run your mouth. I'm not talking to you disrespectfully. Thank you. That's exactly why. All right, point of order. Uh, <laughs> right now, If the, if the nuisance, like I said, there was two separate things. He hasn't done the barn permit yet with the, the permit certificate that's required. That's outstanding. We cannot abate that, correct? I mean, that's, that's not, that wasn't the part of the issue with the abatement. The abatement was actually with the, the junk vehicles on the property and, and the driveway. And if Dirt has been now placed there, albeit not within the 60 days, but it's done. There's nothing for us to abate there. I don't know, because I have an issue with that. I understand, so, I, that, and that's what I'm trying to get to, is that this is, this is now our conversation on this side of the table to figure out the status of the, out, uh, the remainder things, right? So, please. <laughs> you can't just go out and get a piece of tubing <coughs> in the ground and take Understand. dirt from the side. He did not purchase dirt. He did not purchase rocks. He did not do anything. He took a piece of metal, put it in the thing, and covered it up with some dirt from the sides of it. Right. No. He has no permit. He said he talked to him, sent mm -hmm. it in, but he went ahead and did it without getting permission. Right. I have permission. 
You don't, don't have any to. paperwork to bring to right. the meeting. And that's what he said. I should have fucking did it. Because he said, yeah. go ahead and do it. The paperwork will follow. That's Who's he? Who's he? The gentleman you gave me the number. So you don't have his name. Whatever the gentleman you said to contact about the call. Well, I'm just asking you. So when I, you know, I've got to call into him. I, they call. Talk to his person, Joe, the lady that gave me the permit. Are you talking about Joe Manigan? Is Joe, that's that's who I talked to to get the permit when she sent me. I, I've the got Joe. Let me go call Joe. That's what I'm saying. I did. They're out. I left. Them did you me. call his direct number? No, because she said they were out of the office. Oh, they are out. Yes. All right, I'll call first thing in the morning. That's my issue. No, that was right. one of the things that we told him. Right. So he does it today at noon before his three o'clock meeting. Right. Yeah, it's definitely an issue. Yes. And if I was a neighbor, just like these gentlemen have come to the last one, and we told him about the vehicles and everything else, sounds like to me he was just jockeying the cars around. Right. That's my. That's where I stand. But you said it's my my personal stuff, so I trying to appease everybody to make it better. And then you said no permit for the private fence. Why can't I put up a private fence on my property and hide it, make it, everything look better? I don't understand why everybody's still complaining. It's my property. Do, you, do I need to start writing letters for everything that's on everybody's property that isn't supposed to be there? I'm not like that. I just want to get this shit done and I can move on. I don't want to fight. I just want to get whatever my, my personal things, put a privacy fence up, I'll enclose it so you won't see it. I'll put it around the damn container too, so it hides half of that. It's you know, man. I'm just trying to get this stuff. I understand what you're saying, but there again, you're just putting a privacy fence up to hide everything. So I mean, we had this. But it's my personal stuff. There's no building. Everybody else has. Jason, we talked about this last. That's time. what I'm saying. I don't have a building. And you stated at that time, I'm from Missouri, and this is not how we do it. Exactly. I, this is Montgomery County, and this is how we do it. I don't it. know why. You're I, not going to build. You know, if you build a fence, all you're doing is hiding the stuff. But it's my personal stuff. Everybody else has privacy fences. I have their stuff in the backyard. That's what I mean. It, because they have a house there, it doesn't mean nothing. You know, I don't have a house. I don't have nothing. I moved everything. So one of your neighbors can sit right there and you're over there and you're say you're living there and they can have a big a big bonfire and it's all blowing over on your property and everything. You're I'll knock on the door and tell them that they need to put it out. That's what neighbors do. I haven't heard nothing for five years from anybody except for talking to Mike when he's mowing and stuff. Nobody addressed it, the situation, but they want to go behind my back and write letters and complain and complain, but nobody said anything to me so I could fix it years ago. It's just me. I work full time. I have kids. It was Christmas. You gave me 60 days to get everything done at Christmas. I had to buy Christmas for, you know. But we started in October. <coughs> but you gave me 60 days. But we started in October. Yeah. And, and, rain, and, the, and I, can't, hold, I can't do everything. I'm trying my best. Here's the thing. When we laid it out, initially when we were talking, we, we, we did say 90 days. Yes. We pulled it back to 60 days because we needed to see progress. It was very simple what we needed to see. Okay. That was not, that was not done. There was literally for, to, to start the barn permit. There was nothing physically you had to do other than bring us the engineer drawing. I didn't, know, right. I didn't know, but I was trying to get the, the looks of the thing because that's what everybody's complaining about was everything on there. Right. And I tried multiple times. So, I got I got proof. You know, the, the, the way that we laid it out was that the junk vehicles needed to go, and the camper needed to go. You got the camper out of there. Uh, now there's a question as to whether or not that shell is a junk vehicle. It could be considered a junk vehicle. It's still on the property. It was supposed to be gone. Stored somewhere else, inside a building somewhere, doesn't matter. But that's not an operable vehicle. It is considered a junk vehicle. It needed to be gone. It's not. Um, the driveway wasn't done. Uh, you, you contacted, the, when did you contact the county to have that discussion on the permit for the driveway? Was that in the last three weeks? No, that was, I talked to Joe way before. That's when I got the permits and everything. That's and I I printed them off and I mailed them to the mailed them in. That's why I, I don't know. Right. You know, I did everything. I got the email. You know, that's and like I said, you know, yesterday I was like, shit, I haven't heard from nothing. So I had somebody help me redo all the permits. So, know. so I'm going to tell you something that I I sincerely mean from this side of the table. We can't care more than you do. Right. Yeah. We have laid out a plan as to what needed to be done to keep this moving forward. Okay. It hasn't been done. Period. They, they're, they're really not even getting in the brass tax, but it hasn't been done. 
So what we can do now is we'll hear back from the county whether the driveway permit was done. If that was done and the driveway can be completed quickly, I would say within a couple of weeks, we may have we may have a way forward. I, and I'm not I'm not putting anything out there, agreeing to anything. I'm saying possibilities. The barn certificate permit has to be done today. I'll be right. I got still just talking, not saying that this is agreement or acquiescence in any way, shape, or form. But that's something we would have to see today. It should have been done back in October when you were here I just, five I minutes. Worry about the, the stuff on the property. Right, but you didn't take the time to ask the question. That's and Ms. Kaler's here all the time. So, so that's part of, that's where I'm saying we can't care more than you. So the application form and the building prints out of the box, make a copy, give them to Ms. Kaler, that could be done very quickly too. At this time, we're left to the state's definition of what is a junk vehicle. And that being said, we would have to move forward and anything that fits the definition of a junk vehicle would be removed, sent to a storage facility until such time you could remove it and put it someplace else. The storage container, we could have harped on that initially. We didn't. We gave it a pass because we understand uh, it was going to take time and resources to get all this stuff done. But now at this point, if you're not building the barn until spring and the materials to build the barn are in the storage container, we're at a catch-22. I don't have anywhere to put nothing. That's so, my property. I have nowhere. You said you're buying a prefab building? Just from like Menard, the, the, the pole barn, the, the stuff that they said. Yeah, that's just... It's, it's got all the drawings with it. Yeah, they, that's what they said. It comes with all materials and the... the What's in that shipping container you need for that barn? Then, What's that? If you're buying a pre pre packaged building with drawings, everything that's going to come in, be put up right there. Everything for my shop. That's everything that's in. The so nothing in this storage container has anything to do with building a barn. Is that correct? No, it's all my personal stuff. My personal stuff. Storage for, for so my shop. The storage unit then, yeah, yep. at that point. Yep. And that's why I talked before and tried to get everything with the, the other lady that was here before. And, you know, that's, she said no problem with it. And that's why. You know, I got, so, the, got it. So. so because none of this was done by December 20th, I think this is where we're at, where the shipping container needs to be moved. Any vehicle that fits the definition of a junk vehicle needs to be moved. And uh, the barn permit certificate needs to be finished. And if we, if we move the... We, we basically would, uh, we would not move stuff ourselves. It would be contracted and it would be taken either to a storage facility. Uh, there's a couple of like Mr. Marlowe and some others who have facilities within the, the local area to store stuff. We would have it uh, taken and put there for storage. You would pay for the, the, uh, the towing of it, the moving of it, the storage of it, whatever rate that is at the place that we would send it to. This is where we're at. The date was given, nothing was done until well after that date. And even what was done was not done to the degree it needed to be done. And the easy things that could have been done weren't done either. So I'm gonna ask the other trustees what their th thoughts are at this time with moving forward with abatement on the property or because we have two separate issues. One is regarding the permitted driveway with the county. Right. So we wouldn't be able to do anything with that until we hear back from the county anyhow. So the driveway permit would be a secondary issue. The barn permit certificate would be a third issue that would have to be remedied immediately if not quicker. The fourth thing, or sorry, the third thing then is, is the storage of vehicles, junk vehicles and the storage, uh, storage container, shipping container. 
that's on the property. Those would all have to be removed from the property relatively immediately. And if not done so within 14 days. And once again, I'm not prescribing anything. I'm talking to the trustees. If not removed from the property within 14 days, then we would have that done by a local entity to remove and store those vehicles and the storage container. And trailers. And the trailers, thank you. Um, Let's say you trustees, where are your thoughts on this? Hey, but before you guys render a decision, just one thing, some of you know where I live, you know where my farm is. I got two 40 by 60 by 14 foot high pole barns on my property that I built. Now, if they're agricultural use. <clears throat> the span of just the trusses is 40 foot. Now, if I stood up all those trusses and tried to slide them into that container, they won't fit because that container, I don't believe, I ain't stepped it off, but I will tomorrow. Step it, they're not 40 foot. You couldn't get all the material you that it takes to build a pole right. barn into that that's... little thing. Well, and that, that was There's a point no of way. that was a point of clarification the trustee music made was that the the the, P, the components of the pole barn are not. In the storage container somewhere during the conversation it was stated okay. that they were we got clarification they are not in that container so that's that's just the contents from okay. uh, well, Mr. I miss, I'm, workshop okay i missed that then i just i didn't catch it but that's that's okay i'm just i just don't want any misdirection to be going on here right. you know it's like we've had all this 60 days to do with this why do you wait it's like a kid with homework oh god i got a book report due tomorrow well let's start on it tonight what the hell right really well and 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 that's what we're talking about now is that it would take us days to coordinate any removal of items from the property so giving that window of 14 days would just give us time to do our due diligence uh, to take anything that was in violation and have it taken off the property and put into storage. So we are moving towards resolution here. We are we are uh, not giving an extension on a homework assignment. So that said, well, Trustee Music, did you have anything that you wanted to add to the conversation? No, I think I've said all I need to say. Okay. So I'm gonna look at the other trustees and look for concurrence on 14 days to get the junk vehicles by the Ohio ORC. And you can take this with you, the definition of a junk vehicle. Anything that fits that definition has to be off the property. I'm low on money. I, I live, you know, just me. How am I gonna pay for all this stuff? I don't, I, you know, it's just me. I don't, I can't spend this much money to get this off. Of, I don't even know, it's my property. I'm trying to put my stuff. I understand, but it, but but at this point, at this point, our our hands are now tied as to what we have to do moving forward. So but if your paperwork if, says you, any you know, to, you know my cooperation, you know I'm trying to cooperate with you guys, and nothing. I'm, I'm I don't know what to do. I have nowhere. You know that's my property. That I have nowhere to put anything else. So, so everything in that shipping container can be put in storage units. I've, I've already got storage unit. Okay. Well, this is not considered a storage unit. This is considered a shipping container and it's temporary. There's a seven day. But I started the process that I didn't know the, years ago, the process, that's the thing. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to get everything lined out. You know, she wasn't here, you know, the prior lady and everything. I'm trying to get everything lined out. I'm trying to get this. I don't have all this money to just keep throwing and throwing and throwing to get everything off the property because because the neighbors want it off the dang property. When there's privacy so, around everybody's yards. <clears throat> let me make a point. Let me make a point of clarification to you as well that the other residents may have complained 
Ultimately, any decision made on this side of the table is based off the zoning text and what was laid out in our last yes. hearing based on I have no the law. I have no building. That's different than everybody else that has pre structures, you know, already there. You know, and it's kind of like <clears throat> screw me because I have no building, but everybody else, as long as there's there's some gravel down, they can have their camper there. You know, that's what a lot of people are doing. You know, there's so many campers out here. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to find the medium to help you guys, you know, with you guys to work with you. I'm not here to fight you. I'm just tired. You know, I had no money to keep throwing at this, you know. It sounds to me like like you just did something. I spent I did what I, I was trying to clean it up without finding out it. Am I supposed to? Does that meet? The requirements of this area where I just bought property, or I, I own property. I did the permit. I, I did what. Uh, so I, 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 I don't think I don't think you've done everything you could. I, I think you've done what you wanted, and then uh, I done with what I could at the time with what I have. And That's, and it's one person. And, and then we didn't meet the requests that were made, uh, even close meeting the request. Uh, in my opinion, I, I don't believe moving dirt is a driveway. I'm trying. You gave me 90 days originally, and they cut it back to 60. I'm, during the, I, so I did what I could. I'm not, I'm not a farmer. I'm not, I don't have 16 people to help me. It's just literally me. So I, I, I would, my suggestion would be to, to give him some grace and extend that to 30 days. I would say 14. Sorry. Oh, okay. That's your opinion. We, yep, yep, we yep. Yep. Him you hear, yeah. So, and and there, there is a difference between us discussing 90 days yes. and us putting in writing 60 days. Yes. So regardless of that, it was 60 days, it wasn't met. You didn't even get it done within 90 days, okay? So he, so here's what I'm gonna tell you. There's places that you can store that stuff around here. Got money, I don't have well, money, that's the thing. And, and here's the thing is that if we do it, it's just gonna be places lean against your property that's gonna compound as they have it in another location. That's, I, I'm trying to figure out what, what to do, you know. You need to tell so, me. So here's what I'm trying to tell you is that this is a very binary conversation, okay? It's very direct. Yeah. So we gave you time, you didn't do anything. Ms. Kaler has been here. You could have contacted her any time, you didn't. Even in, within 60 days, that takes less than five minutes to do, and you didn't do it. You could have had that application in here and you could have showed us some earnest follow through and you did not. And, and I think that when we had the initial hearing, we were more than generous when we did not have to be because we wanted to give you the chance because we know that you have limited means. We, we gave you the leeway. And I think at that time, I didn't mean to interrupt, no. but we did talk about the joint vehicles at that time. And we had told him then that if they weren't moved, we would have them moved off and put them to storage. Yes. So we did tell you that. I don't see it. It's my, it's my vehicles because they're not up and running. It doesn't mean they're junk. I have nowhere to put them. By definition, it does mean they're junk. And, yeah. and, and by definition, uh, it is an abatement. And it is our job to abate the property. And that's from the state of Ohio. That's and that is what it is. And that's what we were trying to keep from happening when we had the initial hearing was we were trying to give you the leeway to show us that you were going to do your part so that we didn't say everything had to be done at once. Now we're at the point where everything has to be done at once or action is going to be taken. It's not our choice. We're following the letter of the law as it's been prescribed to us. But the law is because we have no other option. I, there's no structure. I can't, you know, I can't, that's the only thing. There's no structure. If there's a structure. I can put everything inside. If, if you would have, if you would have done the two things that were required for the permit certificate, this is a much different conversation because that would have shown that you were taking this seriously and that you were doing what you needed to do to move the process forward. That said, you didn't do any of it until the last couple of weeks. And well outside of the 60 days. So from our perspective, we showed good faith. You did not return that good faith. And now we are at what comes next. And what comes next, if I've heard the trustees clearly, <clears throat> is that we, will, we, we would be comfortable with giving 14 days to remove the junk, what's defined as a junk vehicle by the state of Ohio in section 505-173 the ORC, the storage container needs to be moved. 
That may not happen within 14 days. But the stuff that's in it needs to go somewhere. That would show a proactive follow through, even though we have no reason to give that leeway. I understand moving a shipping container would likely take more than 14 days to coordinate. Yes. So I'm trying to be practical, not generous, I, I guess is a way to put it. But the vehicles that are considered to be junk vehicles are not off the property within 14 days. Then we will reconvene and everything will be removed from the property that's considered a junk vehicle or a storage container. And that will have a 14 day tag with it, which means if what needs to happen in the next 14 days doesn't happen, what needs to come off that property will be done within the next 30 days, or there won't be another conversation. We will take the action to have them, the vehicles that need to be removed, removed, the storage container removed, and they will be put in a storage facility and uh, the cost for transportation, as well as storage per the Ohio revised code will be conveyed to you. And labor. And labor, any, any cost involved with the, move, the moving storage and labor of those vehicles and storage units. Jason, according to the text, it also says that there would be a 5% Fee. There is a 5% fee that. because we have to coordinate all of that. And we have to do that. That is not profit. That is process. Right. right. Can I ask a question? Yes. On your barn, you keep talking about this barn. What do you, what do you plan on? Are you going to, what are you doing with this barn? If you, the pole barn. What are you going to do with it? My per personal stuff. Put my vehicles, put everything in it. Okay. That's why I'm trying. That's why everything was out there. No, I know. Okay. I was just wondering if you, what you were going to use. Just my personal shop. Just you were just going to put storage in it, right? Uh, not even that, just I'll eventually put cement on there. It's going to be like my my shop for all my stuff that, so that's inside. You know, I don't want anything. I don't want all this stuff sitting outside. And that's why we gave the grace right. period yes. that we gave for the 60 days is because we saw what you were trying to get to. <laughs> yes. And we were trying to give you manageable, it's a lot manageable path forward to get it done. But none of that was followed through with. So now we are where we are. I mean, we, we basically can give 14 days to get what the junk vehicles off the property. And if that's not done, then the junk vehicles and the storage container have to be off the property within an additional 14 days. All costs incurred plus 5% would be levied against the property owner and placed in either a lien or uh, as, as an assessed tax with the county office. <clears throat> Does this sound like where we are? Have I, have I categorized this? Jason, I have a question. If, if you reconvene within 14 days from today, or if the stuff isn't moved within 14 days from today, right. then, and you reconvene in 14 days, do I go through the same process? Everything has to be, do we have to send out letters? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Today, it would just be done. Right. So you would just convene because you brought it up. And that's what I was saying is that, so the certificate, the permit certificate has to be done today. Well, I would say by tomorrow because we're already at the end of the day. The junk vehicles, need to be moved off the property within 14 days. If not, the cost incurred would then be compounded at a 5% rate as per the, the state law for the moving labor and storage of those vehicles. And if that's not done within 14 days, then it goes to the storage container and the vehicles will be moved. There won't be a, a meeting. If it's not done, we will pursue having that stuff taken off site, stored in a facility that's appropriate for storing those vehicles in that storage container. And then the cost for doing all of that will be applied as a lien okay. or, or a tax assessment on the property. So 
So we need a resolution for all of that. Okay. Okay. I'm going, I would like to entertain a motion to state that Mr. Deary has 14 days to remove any junk vehicle from the property, and that is in accordance with ORC 505.173. If that is not done within 14 days, the township will have the vehicles and the shipping container removed from the property as an abatement where the labor transportation and storage of vehicles and the storage container will be charged back to the property owner per the ORC with a 5% fee rate for the township's processing. I just wanna be clear about storage container. Mm -hmm. That time frame was not in the 14 days, correct? No, but if the vehicles aren't moved, the then, moved that, then everything is gone. Yes. Okay. And then the, as far as the storage container, <clears throat> when are we going to get where is it? When is it? When does it need to be gone? What is our thoughts on that? Because it's my opinion that the storage container uh, doesn't meet our, our zoning requirements that it needs to. It be. doesn't. And if I move the storage container, they're just going to be vehicles sitting there now. You know, that's kind of like it's. No, no, no. The vehicles have to go. No, my personal vehicles, the truck and yep. stuff. That's not junk. That's all. It's got motors. It's all. Only one that doesn't is the Nova that's on the trailer and then the GTX, the drag car, the, my project car. Okay. That's the only two that don't have no motor, you know, that, that doesn't have, everything else has motors in them, trains in it. So, uh, Are they drivable? We need to see, I, I guess, if, if that's the case, we need to, I guess, see proof of ownership. Um, if you guys just want me to wipe the whole property clean. I, 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 mean, I can't, if this, can't afford this. Nothing's been saying. done up to this. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're asking is that the property is going to be it's my, it's, completely clean. We need to see uh, proof of ownership, I think, to, so that we know that those vehicles are what they are. Um, I think we need to look in to see, I'm almost positive on this, I can't say for sure, that, that any vehicle that is tagged in the state of Ohio needs to be insured. Uh, and some, I don't have such, to, it's not driving wood. I'm not any driving, it's tagged. That is tagged, it's tagged goes, but I'm not. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm going to yeah, look into that's it. That's what I mean. That's why I did this. Um, so the junk vehicles is no engine. Yep. The, yep. the transmission. Yep. Wheels and tires. Yep. Uh, I think there was one more thing. Well, it had to meet all three of the criteria. Meet all three of the criteria. Yeah. Three model years old or older. Which way they are. And in, uh, apparently inoperable. Apparently inoperable. So do they start? Do they run? Uh, run I, I assume they probably. Run. That's what I mean. But the two cars, yeah, that's about. That's they, they don't run. What do you mean? The yeah, like no motor. Yeah, the, the drag car and my Nova. It's just the shell, and then it's pretty much a rolling shell. I just got to put the bug, the bug starts. What's that? The bug starts. We can go fire it up right now. I'd have to get a battery and yeah, hook everything That's up. So it's inoperable but at the moment. Technically, yeah. 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 Okay. It's my, it was my my stuff out of my shop. The truck. Does it start and run? My diesel, yes. So it can be moved off the property then. Yeah, it can be moved. But it's I'm I just don't understand. I'm just asking if it could be. It, yeah, it could be moved. Yeah, they, they all everything run move. It's all movable. It's I can hook up, tow it. It's all there's no wheels off. I want to hook up and tow it. I want to know that it runs. It's operable. Yes, and the jag. It, it's, it's it runs and everything. It's, it's just flat tire. The tires are. Oh, that's what I'm saying. There's only two that have like no motor. You know, that's that's considered that's proof of this ownership of the vehicles, uh, so that we know that they're not just abandoned vehicles. That the, he does have ownership of them, right? The titles, the titles, um, and and if they, you know, I I, I would think of a vehicle that just sits. Um, I would have to assume is inoperable, and so and so uh, just a vehicle sitting and, and I would think the vehicle would need to be moved on occasion uh, to know that it's. Operable. I don't live out there. That's what I mean. That's, Stand. You know, um, like Mr. Ramsey, he don't live out there by his farm. You know, it's just. He comes there and does, does so, thing. So, and with that being said, uh, part of 505.173 also says that um, any vehicle stored can only be stored for 48 hours. Uh, 
and needs to be concealed inside of a building. So, okay, so everybody else is that they have extra vehicles. They're they they're, they're, move they're moving. They're operating. They're they're, they're operating them just, every day. You guys are just picking. You're yeah. just trying to move. We're following this, the, the letter of the law, and if you don't live there, um, the vehicles aren't moving. So everyone else around here who does have vehicles just sitting on the property, That's what I'm they move get, because they live there. Put, they're, they're, they're operating. That's what I'm trying to get the privacy fence. It's my stuff. I have nowhere to put it, and it's going to cost me money, and I don't have all this money. I, that's what I'm saying. Nobody's working with. I have no. no I, I have no money for all this. I, I, I think. I think. I gave you a chance to work with. You. Well, I, and that's. I'll tell you. We tried to be fair. We tried to show a way forward, and you didn't do anything. I I did my best. I have. I have my kids. I work full time. I don't live out here. I'm doing everything I can. I just spent a lot of money trying to get all this stuff going. I was trying to make it look good. For I'm talking. So I'm talking about everything that we laid out. In that hearing, you couldn't find five minutes to call Miss Kaler to ask your questions about the application. I was worried about getting everything looking good for it because that but, see that's a nuisance. Nothing in here says anything about the nuisance. It's garbage, debris, and stuff. That's why. That's why I'm, I'm trying to get everything this, to look good. You know, that's can stay for now. Today's now. So as far as your motion goes, um, he's got 14 days to remove the junk vehicles. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they're all inoperable. Um, it doesn't look like any of them have moved in years. Um, I, I want to see, I'd like, I think we need to see ownership, produce titles to all the vehicles that you plan on leaving there. And, and I'd like to see if we could have proof of, of that they're operable, that, that they don't fall under this. Uh, and, and still even there, I think by letting you leave your vehicles there that are yours and operable, we're still not following the letter of the law. Where it says I mean, they're required to be concealed by means of building fences, vegetation, terrain. At that point, so what? Then what? What, are, what am I doing with my property? I can't do nothing with it. Well, I can't put nothing on it. Everybody's complaining. That's yes, because you're going to follow this. Follow this. Move forward, uh, Mr. Deary, with with the permit to put a building on it. And then once that building is there, then you can load it with all the stuff you want. It is but, just it, but you haven't me, you haven't done any of this. And and so and so that concerns me on. Moving forward, if it's just you and you don't have the means to do this, 14 Mr. Deary, days I'm sorry. Then 14 days likely wouldn't make a difference. Wouldn't make a difference. And, and, and are you? I can't take everything off. I don't have nowhere to put it. I got to find somewhere to put it, talk to somebody, pay somebody, pay this, pay that, pay this. I'm not made of money. I, I work for a living paycheck to paycheck. I'm doing everything I can on a freaking shoestring budget. That's why I bought the property. I, yeah, I put a lot of shit out there, but I understand the neighbors are mad. I, that's why I'm trying to clean it up the best I can with what I got. This, this has moved beyond the residents being mad. We are now looking down the barrel at the law, and the law says you're in I violation. I'm attorney then, because I, I don't know what else to do. Because I'm, I'm trying to work with you guys to do everything, and you're like telling me, no, it's got to be this. No, be we tried to work with you, and you didn't do anything. I mean, I, I don't have the means. I'm trying everything I can. Nobody, I have nobody. I have no storage. I got the camper off. I had to beg a buddy to come get my camper to get it off the property because you got, you know, because I understand there's. So, like I said initially, if if we saw progress on what we laid out on October 21st, this is a different conversation. We have not, that's where we are. <clears throat> so, I'm going to withdraw my uh, entertaining of emotion. And I'm going to rethink how we move forward here. Um,
All right. I would like to entertain a motion regarding the property of Jason Deary in case 2021-002 of the following. Permit for certification of the pole barn with the township will be completed by January 21st, 2022. The driveway permit will be validated by the county as soon as they can. Mr. Deary will have 14 days to remove junk vehicles in accordance with ORC 505.173 from the property and must provide titles and proof of operability of the remaining vehicles within 14 days. If this deadline is not met for these three criteria, the township will remove any vehicle defined to be a junk vehicle and a storage container with the cost of transport storage and labor and a 5% fee as per prescribed by state law that will be levied against the owner as a tax assessment or lien. Do you have anyone willing to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Yes, second. All right. Please call roll, Ms. Kaler. I do it backwards, right? Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Music? Yes. And Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. So at this time, Mr. Deary, you need to get the, the barn uh, cert per, uh, permit certificate completed by tomorrow's close of business with Ms. Kaler. Everything else is prescribed. We'll provide in writing by the next business day. Uh, you have you have his email address. Um, I said I want contact information. It, does that include an email address? I need email. Do you have an email? Yeah, phone number. Yeah, I think I gave her everything. Okay. okay. All right. We'll provide you a copy of what I just outlined because she's going to have to dictate it from the recording. Yeah. No. And she'll email that to you within the next day or so. I'm here tomorrow. I won't so I can give you the permit. And that's fine. And that way you know how we're moving forward. I just want to know exactly whatever I, I do, I now do, you know, go from there. And if you come in early afternoon, that'll give me the morning to get this. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 that's okay. Fine. All right. That said, I make it into adjourn. Second. Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Archer? Yes. And Trustee Music? Yes. Thank you.